We probably should get started. I apologize, we're actually starting a little late because the previous one ran over, so anyhow. Pardon me? It was his fault, that's right. Yeah. Put on your blue buttons, come on, everybody put on their blue buttons. <laughs> They're all fascinated. Uh, anyhow, this session is on anomaly and breach detection and uh, you'll see in a minute, I'm gonna give a short presentation. Again, my goal is just to frame the issues. Uh, and give you kind of a, in this case, uh, some definitions that I use, just mine, you can choose to use them or not. Uh, <coughs> I apologize. Uh, first, let me just say, you know, I, I follow at ARC, I manage the cybersecurity, and I do, we do market studies. And this year, we actually have five. I, I'm happy, I'm not just trying to promote the studies, though I'm happy to do that with you. But, you know, the market studies I do is what the opportunities are for different market areas and things, and I would certainly say that anomaly and breach detection is probably the hottest topic today. It's a new topic, it's a very interesting topic, there's a lot of interest when I talk to people. Uh, so that's one reason I think this is a very important session. Uh, and these solutions, what they're really monitoring is the integrity of, of industrial control systems. This is, I apologize, this is hard, you can't see this. Can you turn this on? Okay, that's better. I noticed the fellow, the speaker in the last one was smart and he stood here, because you can't see it. I apologize, the block. Uh, and one thing I want to point out is these solutions, even though they're, and we're talking about them as cybersecurity, a big driver for these solutions are some of the other benefits that come out of it, some of the operational detection problem, issues and things like that, which is a very big driver in the market today. Uh, now, within ARC, I use the term here anomaly and breach detection, and this is just my own definition, so you can take it for what it's worth, I guess. Uh, what I'm doing is, uh, there's, my job as an analyst is to try to make sense out of what the products are that I see and group them into certain categories, though I don't think suppliers like me putting them in categories, but that's what I do. And for my purposes, what I did is I took those two terms and I talk about breach detection solutions, and what I mean by that are Solutions that look for anomalous behavior within an endpoint, okay? Something is not the same in this endpoint from what, or what you expect it to be. And where I say uh, anomaly detection, and I use the term anomaly network message detection, are ones that look not at the endpoint itself, but it looks at the communications that are happening within the control system between the endpoints. Uh, I also just want to make a point that I distinguish, and, this, and I think they do as well. You'll hear about network intrusion detection solutions. Usually network intrusion is something that's looking to see, it's trying to trap things from getting into the system. The anomaly detection is more looking at things that are probably already in the system, and you're looking at the network messages that are flowing within the system. Now, you could also detect one coming in from the outside, but that's not the main thing where a lot of intrusion detection is only looking at what's coming in. Uh, and the suppliers we have, you'll find suppliers offer a variety of solutions in this. I, for my purposes, in my market reports, I broke it down, I discuss breach detection solutions, and I see there's two kinds of offerings out there. Again, the, 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 it's probably a continuum, but there's two kind of classes. One is what I would call agent-based solutions, which is where someone puts some kind of an agent within an endpoint. Often that's PC-based in this case because that's the ones that support that type of technology generally. And those solutions are looking from the inside, seeing if there's odd file writes, if there's applications running that shouldn't be running and things like that. And then they tell someone. Uh, agentless breach detection are solutions that look from the outside of the endpoint. And they are looking at things like has the configuration of the endpoint changed? Has the ports that it's using changed? Or some may even go and look at the actual code that's in, the, in there and look at that and say, has it changed? And the whole issue here is to see, has something changed within the endpoint for breach detection solutions? And if they find it, their job isn't to stop it. Their job is to tell somebody there's something strange here happening, okay? Uh, when we talk about anomalous message I'll just call it anomaly detection, but I, what I'm focusing on is solutions that look at the messages that are flowing within the networks. Uh, generally, they are passive type of solutions, so they're actually going off a span port or something. They don't have to be, but they generally are. It's a popular thing. 
And I have two cases there. One is I call policy-based anomaly detection, and that is one that somehow, however it's done, someone has established certain policies that basically say, this endpoint's allowed to talk to that endpoint with certain, certain protocols, certain registers, whatever, but they are established policies. And then the detection is just trying to, is going to let you know if they ever see anything that happens outside of the allowed policies. It's kind of an application whitelisting type, or network message whitelisting is another way to talk about it. The other kind are ones that are I call behavior-based. And those are the ones where you have a solution that is monitoring the network, and maybe it's, it may do this continuously, or it may do it in a training phase, but it looks and it automatically builds trees or some type of a technology, and there's all kinds of technologies, to establish what is the normal flow of messages within this network. Who talks to who? What do they do? What is normal? So they collect that. And again, there can be statistical filtering. There can be neural networks. There's all kinds of solutions that could be done. Uh, but in those solutions, they may run continuously and constantly update that. Uh, or they may do a learning phase, a training phase, and then they lock it down and say, OK, from now on, I'm going to be, in, in essence, they're capturing the policies. And then they say, I'm going to use the policy. And then you might have a tool in the background running. The behavior based, you know, one of the concerns that people have sometimes is on false positives. And so one way to lock that down is to shift it to policies. Uh, now, the kind of features, so that's the solutions that we see in the market. Uh, the kind of features when I talk to end users, what are they looking for? Uh, first of all, a very important thing, and I mentioned a moment ago, is they're looking not just for cybersecurity. I mean, that's, that might be the driver for getting it. But they're looking for anything that doesn't operate the way I expect it to operate. You know, one nice thing in control systems is we have well-defined things that we want to do just what we program to do. Nothing more, we just want them to do that. So if they're doing something that they shouldn't be doing, you want to tell someone. And their job is to alert. Now, many of the times when they're not doing the right thing, it may be an operational issue. It may be the device is failing. It may be that an operator made an error. Somebody may have made a change. So those things would still be detected. So one of the big benefits I see, and, I, and the end users seem to very much appreciate, is the benefit. To me, I like it. It's almost like a monitoring system of the automation system. It's looking at the top and just saying, there's something different in this system. And when you detect that, the issue is to tell somebody and then if nobody was supposed to be changing anything and you find something changed, you have a problem. If, if you know that Fred just went out and was supposed to be changing something and it tells you that thing just changed, you say, OK, I understand what that is. Uh, the other, another issue is this thing of minimal impact on the control system. Uh, most things, particularly this is the network, but both network monitoring and the breach detection. Most end users say, I want to have this feature, but I don't want to have you do anything that affects the way my system operates. So for the network monitoring systems, it's generally you run it off a span port or something like that to try to make it a purely passive solution. Uh, and you also want to minimize the false positives. You don't want it telling you, driving you crazy, telling you that these things are wrong and you don't have time to troubleshoot. We just had a previous session about the lack of people, in essence. And so you certainly don't want to aggravate that issue. Uh, another thing that people seem to be looking for is solutions that offer contextual support. And when I say that, they just don't want, it's, they don't want to get messages like you get just from a SIM, just a, this thing there. They want to understand what happened, when it happened, what's the context of how it happened. Ideally, I think a lot of operators would tell me they want something to say, hey, this PLC just changed in this program and, and somebody just changed this register or this uh, alarm limit or something like that. Uh, and then the, another thing is they want these solutions to integrate with other cybersecurity management solutions. And, you know, when I say that, there's kind of two aspects. One is to integrate the alerts that are generated with a SIM system, a system that someone is going to use to do incident management or to investigate it. Uh, another one that I see seems to be getting more and more popular, and I was joking before with some people, is as I mentioned, a very big thing is passive. I saw head shaking, by the way. I don't know if you all at the table saw it, but people's heads were shaking. Yep, we don't want anything in there that changes anything. And so they usually ask the suppliers, are you sure that this won't affect anything? Yes. And they'll say yes. And then the next question that comes out of the operator's mouth is, okay, now if you detect something, can you stop it? From, can you stop it? 
And you know, so it's a completely conflicting thing. But one thing I find very interesting is now a lot of the anomaly detection solutions in particular are starting to try to integrate in with firewalls so that you could, in a passive, you can run passively and then maybe modify the, the policies within the firewalls and things. So it's a very interesting thing, very emerging kind of issue. Now, with that said, uh, I've been doing this in every session. Uh, if you were at the workshop yesterday, you'll see I have a slide with all of the, the sponsors for our forum. And what I've been doing, one thing I'm very happy with and proud of, is in the middle, you see the one that's circled in blue. Those are cybersecurity. Hopefully, you could hear me all that talking I was doing. <laughs> uh, have you ever had that happen? You're talking on the phone, and you're talking, 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 and then you find out it went dead. Uh, anyhow. In the center there in the blue is, are ones that are cybersecurity companies, and we're very honored that we have 16 sponsors this year who are cybersecurity companies. And this is in addition to the cybersecurity the work being done by automation companies, which I have at the top. And I don't mean to set them aside, it's just that I want to highlight the ones that are there. And what I've been doing in every session to help you is we are encouraging everybody to take advantage of the fact that they're in the showcase area, and they all have booths. We want to encourage you to talk to them. We think you can learn a lot. So what I've been trying to do is in every session just highlight the companies who are in this session, who are, have products related to this session. So those are the ones I have highlighted there, okay? Uh, and, and let me just comment, I just did a market study on this and I would say these are the leading companies in the world on that. So I'm very happy of that too. And I'm sure they're all very happy to hear me say that. 